Thank you. 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 Thank you.
and we take it down to Riverside Military Academy and put them through a program that gets them out of their comfort zone. The main objective is to show these kids that they have what it's going to still come and challenge their life. Wherever they're at, they have the schools to be down there and to overcome these problems and succeed in life. So the minute you see this, or when the minute you recognize tonight, have overcome the challenges, they step up, proving to themselves that the parents still need the teachers, they will go above and beyond to get the job done and overcome any obstacles that they face in life. We put them through a rigorous physical and mental program through the weekend, culminating in propelling off Mount Vernon. This year we didn't get to go to because of weather, but we did have them repel at the facilities in Riverside. All the students opening, uh, all the challenges that we gave them, and they stand before you prouder and better than you were tonight. So without further ado, if you might make gentlemen, if you will join us up here with the group. So if you participate in gut check, please come on up. We'll give you a bottle. Please shake every man's hand that's up here with you. Okay, Mr. John, we'll slide up and we'll just George as well as the tech here. Thank you. Uh, and just uh, a big thank you and congratulations to all the staff who helped put the Big Red Rally together. It was uh, one of the best we had. Air conditioning, thank you. Wow. A lot of, lot of spirit, nice message, nice challenge for everybody. That we, so, for all everyone who had a part of that. Else? Uh, this ends the recognition portion of our meeting. Now it's a good time to leave. If you'd like to, we'll stick around for our normal business. You're more than welcome to do so. It's my understanding that we do not have this business conference. Uh, I'd like to entertain a motion to adopt the agenda. So Got a motion by Mr. Mitchell. Second by Dr. Randy. All right. Uh, all those in favor say aye. All right, um, Mr. Collins, someone please have mercy with the call. Let's amend, amend, uh, I'm going to make a motion to adopt promo six, seven, and nine. All right, we've got to amend the uh, motion to a second. Second. The second by Mr. Norrell. All those in favor, say aye. Motion carries. Thank you, Mr. Smith. 
Dr. Kurtz, and Dr. Ruth. All right. Yeah, I just want to give a little bit of an update about where we are in return to school last week, kind of where we are today. The first thing that everybody noticed that we started back is traffic has always increased. Uh, new patterns, new start time for middle school and our high school. Um, Mr. Lackey and his team have done a fantastic job of getting our kids home safely every day. Uh, we did make some adjustments to Gainesville High School after the first day to ease some of those transitions, both in the afternoon and in the morning. And every day, right now, we're just getting a little faster and faster, which is always a good thing. Uh, another thing I want to tell you about is our enrollment. Um, you know, I'll give you a full report probably in September once our numbers uh, settle down a little bit more. But to give you an idea, uh, right now, we are on track with where we anticipated our enrollment to be. Uh, we anticipated um, a good number this year, especially at middle school and high school. But what was interesting a little bit was that middle school and both east and west, those numbers were higher than we anticipated. Um, GMS West right now has 911 students enrolled, uh, and East had 861 students enrolled. So that puts us close to 1,800 students uh, back at the middle school just a year ago. We were around 1,700 students. When you look at the elementary schools, continual DEA and Newton have slightly lower enrollment than we anticipated, while the number of fair students in Monroeville have slightly higher enrollment than we anticipated. The nice part here is due to some of the investments that we made at the board over the last number of years, no school has higher than 80% capacity uh, at elementary and middle schools. So even though we have an enrollment that is back up this year compared to where it was last year and the year before, we still have room for growth. Doesn't mean that's something we want to grow that extra 20%, uh, but at least we have room uh, before we have to even lead in uh, some modules. Uh, for the high school, we anticipated 2,300 students, and they are at uh, 2,348 as of this morning. When you include pre k we are just over 8,000 students at Kansas City Schools, and we've held steady there uh, for the last few years. As we also roll into this school year, you're always uh, kind of reflecting on things that are new. Uh, we're seeing a large increase in the special education population in kindergarten. And speaking to some of my uh, colleagues across the state, they're seeing that as well. And so it may be something related to COVID from a couple years ago and students that are just now here in school, uh, maybe some impact there related to uh, opportunity that may or may not have had a child care interaction in the home uh, and so forth. So we're going to be monitoring that closely, uh, but we definitely have a higher number of special education students in kindergarten and with that increase. Just want to give you a quick update of where we're with transportation and enrollment with an also special uh, not going to give, give a little uh, brief overview of the traffic situation at uh, Gangston Middle School West. So, Gangston Middle School West, we do go to partners with the Police Department. They had an officer out there uh, every morning uh, just to kind of help remind people to slow down the signs that are up uh, that they put up as well. Uh, just get people used to the new traffic pattern in the uh, The nice part. Is that a large majority of people taking that camp are taking the ride from Kevra heading back towards the city? Uh, there are some that have to take the left to go back south or uh, west in that case. In some of those cases, you know, they may have to wait a little while, but it is looking good. Uh, in the afternoon, Mr. Mayor and his team, there's about 100 or so car rides, I believe, 100, 125. Uh, they get off campus very quickly. Uh, it really, to be honest, uh, ran a lot smoother. Uh, GMS West than I anticipated it would at the start of the year, and that's due to. Mr. Mayor and his team, all uh, another few minutes, uh, Ms. Freeman and her team were excited to have half as many buses and half as many uh, vehicles in the afternoon and the morning. So, overall, it's just been a, a breath of fresh air uh, when it comes to transportation, especially. Thank you. Any other questions for Dr. Williams? Thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, Ms. Staddle. She's going to present the uh, second round of the June coronavirus finance response, as well as the July coronavirus finance response. Good evening. Um, I have an update for you for June. Um, it's a preliminary information. Our revenues here today are at 80.9 million, and our expenditures are at 77 million. We have spread over expenditures for the year so far of 3.2 million. Uh, our fund balance at the end of June, this is a projection, so we're still, still working in June, plus month now, and the year. 
this 24.9. Oh, do you still have any of these things? What is your close out schedule? Um, the next is the women who's kind of section of the mosques and district, but that's him and see the back of each other. Any other? So the next time we bring this before the board, we'll be a final financial. Do you need a motion for the Okay, thank you. Um, for July, we have. Um, Expenditures that were ran was the three point one is perfectly normal, almost in the same position uh, last year. It is an incredibly suspect for the QP. So um, that brings we walked before the estimated to be one point nine million fund outs every year and with the expenditure number revenue that we can fund out to the point of the page. Let me use collections for a wondering Any questions? Do I have one looking over this? Where's that to retire this slot in November? October will be the last month. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, next up is uh, Ms. Donna Allen. Reading policy GAMB, first reading. Good evening, Lord. I bring before you the, um, the new policy JAMB, which is possession of weapons by employees. This was, is the first reading. We had some discussion in our what discussion on this um, new upcoming policy back in August when we were at uh, GMS. Yeah, so Ms. Allen and I asked her to uh, work with the attorneys uh, to craft a policy related to the armed security guards that we brought before the board. And so this is the policy that would reflect that it does have to sit for 30 days. Uh, we are starting interviews this week uh, for the manager position. And then by the time we approve this policy a month from now, we will hopefully have all of the guards hired. We will have some training over that period of time as well. Uh, this allows us to arm specific personnel, in this case for us. It is just the security guards. And this is the first reading, so no action required. Oh, Ms. Allen, I'd like to raise the question for you. With this is new ground, new all new ground, new for all of us. My question is: Would it we be wise to add language for an appeal for violation of? There's a violation of the people to the board uh, to clarify that question. Uh, it, in my reading, it addresses the nuts and bolts uh, and the intent. But if there is an issue uh, regarding license or order performance or other policy practice. My question is, would we be, be wise to add a small section of language that infractions may be appealed to the board? Absolutely, and we can work on adding that prior to the second. Again, it's new ground, and that, 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 that it struck me that it's not mentioned. I rather had it mentioned than not. Thank you. I'd like to take that one step on it. When you look at our policy of UDBC community involvement, if you're policy that, uh, it's just a policy that could come along lately that I think that it, it needs more than just input from the board. There would also be input from the community. And this policy is already in place to see how those people could go to councils and of the community groups that are interested in what's happening in our school system. So before we get to this policy, I would love to see that happen with all the policies that we have out there that we, we have to adopt soon. This, again, this policy, we need to see community involvement in policy that. If we do uh, sit out there and send the website, which unfortunately you have to dig around to find, and so that does make it a little harder to find. 
uh, Miss Allen and I will get together and look at ways to either, you know, sometimes we wind up sending it to the uh, government councils to get their input, uh, but sometimes that's not broad enough for the population to get a review from. In this case, we probably put them on the website as well. Uh, so what happens is it can it would take them uh, to the, the assembly web page and in turn they can submit a comment and it automatically notifies. I know me, and I believe Ms. Collins and Ms. Allen as well. If there's ever a comment uh, on a policy that's submitted for that, we get those notifications. So we can definitely look at promoting that a little bit better. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Brandon. Any other questions for Mrs. Allen? Yeah. All right. Are there any discussion on this? Motion to adjourn. I got a motion by Mr. Smith. Stay by Mr. Norholz, our leadership hall friends. You can both be classmates. You attended one of the shortest games of school for me. Uh, all those in favor? Motion to adjourn. Thank you for coming.